A block with mass m equals 2 kilograms is connected by a rope across a 50 centimeter diameter. Ooh, diameter, not radius, which is important to know. Uh, 2 kilogram pulley as shown in the figure. There is no friction in the axle, but there is friction between the rope and the pulley so that the rope does not slip. The weight is accelerating upward at 1.2 meters per second squared. What is the tension in the rope? Okay, so I'm going to say rope right there where the T is. So what I'm going to do here, there's a couple ways of solving this. There's the correct way, and then there's the kind of shady way. I'm going to show you the correct way first. So we have, let's say, tension 1 here. I'm going to cross that out and call this tension 2. So if we do free body diagrams here, we have a force and a gravity. And so we know that the sum of all forces, that is a terrible summation symbol. Sum of all forces, that's not good, but it's better, equals mass times acceleration. In this case, we have uh, mass the block times acceleration, which we know is going to be 1.3. That's given to us. And the sum of all forces is going to be T1 minus force gravity. Um, T1, I'm going to put as positive because we know that is bigger than force gravity because we know it's moving upward. So simplifying this one more time, we get T1 minus mass the block times gravity. Um, can I solve for T1? Do I want to solve for T1? I'm going to solve for T1. So T1, using this part and that part, equals mass block minus mass block times gravity. Oh, put a little acceleration there. Hmm. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do here is, nope, supposed to be a positive, positive right there. So this is going to be mass times acceleration plus gravity so tension one and just from an intuitive point of view i know this is going to be i'm going to use positive for g here positive 9.8 because i know it's going to take more than the force of gravity to pull it up because not only is the force required to hold it up against gravity we're actually accelerating it upwards so it's going to be this is actually going to be a number bigger than gravity so 9.8 plus 1.3 okay now we got that part taken care of, or at least thought about. Now we're going to talk about this part. So we have our submission of all forces equals mass times acceleration. So now I'm going to say that sum of all torques equals the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So for this then, we know that we're dealing with a disk, and the moment of inertia for disk is one half mr squared. I'm going to do r pulley uh, squared times alpha. Now, alpha, we know that the relationship between angular and linear, if there's no slipping, is distance x equals r theta, um, velocity, v, equals r omega, and acceleration, a, equals r alpha. And this is the one we do, want. I just do it in that order, like writing it from top to bottom like that, so I don't forget. The top one is the only one I know. I just know all the others are kind of similar. So then alpha equals A over R. Excellent. Plug that in. So we have an A over R. Now we know that this the sum of all torques here, the torque we're looking at here is going to be this one minus that one. Because this torque tension one is pulling down, but this tension two is, I guess, also pulling down. The better way to say is tension two is clockwise, tension one is counterclockwise. Either way, I'm going to say this is equal to torque 2 minus torque 1. These are torques. And torque is R cross F. But since they're perpendicular, R and F, it's just going to be R times F. So this is going to be R tension 2. These are tensions. That's tor those are torques. Minus R. These are all R's of the pulley because that's where the uh, tension is being pulled at. It's at the radius right here, R. That is the perpendicular distance, if you will. T2 minus T1 seems reasonable. We can probably factor out an R. R, T2 minus T1. So if we look at this equation and we look at that equation, we can divide both sides by R. And we get, bum, 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 1 half mR squared, probably an A, 
all over r squared equals t2 minus t1. I just moved this r over. The r squareds cancel, which is convenient because now I don't have to convert diameter to radius. And we have t2 minus t1 equals 1 half m a. Seems reasonable. Now we know what t1 is, but we want to find t2. So solving for t2, we have 1 half m a plus t1. And this will equal bum, 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 t1. Here we go, t1, good call. Mass times acceleration plus gravity. So we will have 1 half m a plus 1 half mass times acceleration plus gravity. Acceleration plus gravity. Can we cancel things out? Maybe we can cancel a couple things out. Maybe. Interesting. Did I put an extra one half in there? Now it's supposed to be a one half there. Yeah, looks reasonable, I suppose. Let's see what kind of answer it gives us. So let's see, we'll factor out in M mass. Oh. I think I got the masses of the pulleys and the uh, block confused in there. That's okay. Luckily, they're the same. So normally, I can't get away with this, but this time I can. So we have 1 half times A plus A plus G. 2 times 1 half times 1.3 plus... 1.3 plus 9.8. This feels really shady. Maybe. We'll see. Real shaky. So 0. 0.5 times 1.3 plus quantity. 1.3 plus 9.8. Check. We get something like 11.75 times 2 and we get 23.5 equals 23.5 newtons which I think is probably correct. But my conceptual understanding at this point is zero. I have no idea what just happened. I lost it somewhere around there, and I'm like, yeah, just follow the math. Which, you know, it's being a math person, I'm like, well, okay, I guess we'll follow the math. Half the time, though, you follow the math to your doom. So should have. it's good to have a conceptual understanding of what's going on. Okay, I'm going to look at this then from a different point of view with a shady, less correct, more shoot from the hip type method. So if you look at this, you're like, all right, we have force equals mass times acceleration. Oh, this is the shady way if you didn't realize that's where I was going with this. And I'm gonna say this is mass total. And the only force we have involved here is from the block. So that's gonna be mass times gravity. Oh, no, we have two forces. We have uh, tension minus force gravity. Okay, we're good here equals mass total. So the masses we have is one from the block and one from the pulley. So I do bum, 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 the mass of the block, which is two. So two plus, and then we're, because we're doing mass total here, now we're going to do the mass of the pulley. But you really can't do mass of the pulley because it's not really moving in a linear fashion, it's rotating. So the way I'm going to convert that is I'm going to do I over R squared. You might be like, where did that come from? Well, it's kind of, it works. Let's go with this for now. The idea is you can kind of sort of convert uh, moment of inertia to um, linear by dividing it by R squared. So we have, I'm going to write this as mass block for now just to keep things straight. So we have mass block plus moment inertia of a pulley, which would be 1 half m r squared, all over r squared times acceleration of the system. And one thing to keep in note here is these, even though they're usually the same, and in this case they are the same, the radius, this is the radius of the pulley, but this is the perpendicular radius between the force and um, the center of rotation. So this is perpendicular um, radius between the force and it's the same over here too and then this is the radius of the pulley they're all the same in this case but you could get crazy shapes where that's not true so that's the case here and they can cancel and we're left with 
mass of the block, which is 2. So I'm going to write tension over here. Tension equals mass of the block, which is 2, plus 1 half mass of the pulley, which is also 2, times the acceleration total, which is 1.3. And then we have to, I'm going to move this force gravity on the other side, plus mass, uh, mass times gravity, which is um, 2, because this is for the block, times 9.8. We could probably do 9.81, but I'm going to go with 9.8 here. So if we look at this and add some of it together, bum, bum, bum. Ah, I did that tune too much. I need to come up with a new tune. 1 half times 2 is 1. This is 3 times 1.3 plus 2 times 9.8. Get the calculator. 3 times 1.3 plus 2 times 9.8. I'll throw on a 1. No, no, I shouldn't. Um, click 23.5 and that gives us an answer of 23.5 and the logic here this kind of makes more sense so for this one we did this we, we started with sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration because we looked at it as all right let's look at the mass total and this is the uh, force net then the when you combine all the forces together and for the mass then for the mass of the pulley, I just said that we can take the moment of inertia of what's rotating and divide by the radius that we're uh, pulling it at, which for the most part is true. You should do it more, you know, technically the correct way is the first way where you're more formal, but this will give you the same result in pretty much most problems they'll do, especially in physics one. So took a uh, moment of inertia divided by r squared. The r squared is eventually canceled, which was convenient. And we were left with 23.5, and that kind of feels more intuitive, logical, makes more sense, feels better than the other way I did it. So that's how I would approach that problem. That's how I would get 23.5 as newtons as the answer. Hope that helps. See you next time.